Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. I made it a point to try and give you, this December, the best month of videos I've ever done, so I'm going to try and keep that going today. We're going to take Ja out for some fun first, and then we're going to head off to Inglewood Cemetery. I've never been to this cemetery, but a lot of famous people are buried there, and one in particular that I really want to go visit today. She was someone that I fell in love with, <laughs> well, her, her comedic personality anyway, while watching reruns of her on Sanford and Son. Yeah, today we're going to go visit the grave of Aunt Esther. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. Yeah, that means it's time for you to go have some fun right now. And I'm still geeking out that Steve Keen sent me this painting of me. A fan, if you missed the live stream, a fan, Bob Yeager, contacted Steve Keen and purchased a pack of paintings for me. And right smack dab in the center, he sent two of these large Days with Jordan the Lion paintings. I love it. So I'm guessing most of you know Lawanda Page as Aunt Esther because that is maybe one of the greatest characters. I mean, to write out a, a character like that and then to invent what she did with the um, almost like the preacher-like language, the, the pattern that she would speak became iconic. She was also in Martin and she was also the church's chicken lady, but there's a lot you don't know about her that I'll tell you once we get out there, including what she did before she was on Sanford and Son. Good grief. <laughs> like a chain. Ja, if Aunt Esther was here, she'd call you a heathen. Yeah, you gotta love it. Her character on Sanford Sun was so great. She was a like a Bible thumper that always called someone a sucker or you old heathen, <laughs> and always somehow ended up using her handbag to beat up someone. This is so funny. This little dog over here and the big dog over there keep barking at each other through the fence and chasing each other. Here they go. <laughs> what are you up here telling me? Huh? <laughs> what are you telling me? I see a gopher. Do you know? Gophers do to a golf course? All right, we're headed off to Inglewood Cemetery. Like I said, I'd never been here before. And a lot of famous people, historical people buried here. Edgar Bergen, Sugar Ray Robinson, Betty Grable. And also some of the greatest singers of all time, Etta James, Ella Fitzgerald, and Ray Charles. All right, it looks like it's right up here. Yep, there it is. Now we might actually see some other graves while we're here, but I wanna first look for Lawanda Page. That wasn't even a real name. So we entered from the Florence Avenue side, and as soon as you come in, you wanna take a left and this is what we're looking for. You can see the sign over here that says Capistrano Court, Capistrano Gardens. That's where she's at, right here. Right, I've been out here walking around for a while and I have not found her. I do have the coordinates from online, but it doesn't lead you to her. We'll find her though, I have no doubt. I'm not gonna give up till we do. Okay, I just figured out what I'm doing wrong. We're looking for a certain memorial panel and now I just found that we are in the right section at least. So she's in panel 43. Let's see, that is panel 40, 41, 42, 
43 is right here. So she's over here. Oh, there she is, right there. Known professionally as Lawanda Page, Alberta Peel on Esther. Now she has a great story. Born in Cleveland, moved to St. Louis, and was a schoolmate of Red Fox, Fred Sanford. So they knew each other going way back. But she got started professionally at the age of 15 years old. Now, <laughs> this might be a major shock to a lot of people, but at the age of 15 years old, her start was being known as the uh, woman who could light your cigarette with her fingertips. Yep, she became known as Lawanda, the bronze goddess of fire. So that's right. The woman that we would come to know as Aunt Esther got her start eating fire and lighting people's cigarettes with her fingertips. Now she ended up performing in nightclubs all over the country with people like Richard Pryor and her pal Red Fox, mostly doing a lot of the Chitlin circuit. And then in the 60s, she moved out to Los Angeles and started working as a comedian. She started working with Leroy and Skillet, became what she called herself as the first black woman of comedy and she had a pretty raunchy act, started releasing um, comedy albums as LaWanda Page. And then, you know, Red Fox wanted her for his new sitcom. Unfortunately, the people that were in charge didn't necessarily want her. And so Red had to really fight for her to get an audition. And of course, as we know, who could perform on Esther better than LaWanda Page? I mean, Alberta Peel whichever one you want to call her, whichever one she preferred, she just created some amazing moments. You know, she <laughs> was a church-going woman who loved Lamont. She was very tender to Lamont, but was really tough on Fred and was always beating up Fred's friends, always getting into bickering fights, calling each other names. And uh, she had a drunk husband, Woodrow, <laughs> that would always show up with her. She just was one of those ultimate characters, but Aunt Esther went down in history as maybe one of the greatest aunts ever portrayed on TV. Now she took that even beyond Sanford and Son because when that show wrapped up, she was on Sanford Arms with Red Fox and also on Sanford. They almost didn't cast her. Like I said, Red Fox wanted her. They came and saw her audition and they gave her the part, but then they started watching her and realized that maybe she was a little bit too much of a nightclub comedian and that maybe she wouldn't work on sitcoms and they were thinking of firing her and this was kind of a big deal because she had almost given up on Los Angeles. She had a sick mom and she was thinking about just giving it all up and going back to St. Louis and it was you know getting this audition that was keeping her here so Red Fox actually told the producers if you fire her or if she doesn't end up on the show then I'm walking away from the show and it's a good thing he did because like I said she was one of the most integral parts, one of the most integral characters. And I'll never forget that time. I mean, she could say things on there that you couldn't say now. I'll never forget the time that a man showed up claiming to be Lamont's real father. And she shows up and <laughs> Fred says, why don't you tell Esther what you told me? I'm Lamont's father. And she says, what? <laughs> and she calls him a very choice word and then she says, I know my sister, my sister would have never done anything like that. And Fred says, according to Esther, her sister's as pure as the wind driven snow and I'm the only driver. <laughs> oh, she was so great. But you know, she ended up having a pretty good career after that because she was in a lot of movies. Um, one of the ones I remember kind of, you wouldn't think of is that she plays a clown in Shakes the Clown. <laughs> Bobcat Goldwaite's Shakes the Clown. It's a really funny movie, but definitely not like a, uh, a staple, but it's definitely a cult classic that I think most people would love if they watched it. And then of course she was in uh, Friday. She was on Chips. I mean, she really had a pretty big career. She did a lot of things outside of Sanford and Son, but I think, you know, when you're in something as popular and as famous as Sanford and Son, that's what you, you go down for. But one of the other things that I really loved about her career was anytime you go onto YouTube and look up an old Dean Martin roast, she was always there. She was always there roasting just about everybody. And, uh, 
you know, seeing her standing there in between Red Fox and Dean Martin and just one after another hitting, you know, each one with below the belt shots. Just great comedy. Great on Esther. Alberta Peel, professionally known as Lawanda Page. Now, Alberta Peel unfortunately passed away at the age of 81 years old, and like I said, she had a fantastic career. She did everything from Love Boat to My Blue Heaven, and you'll see right next to her is Clara E.R. Johnson, Sis Truvine. That was her daughter. She was a pretty well-known, um, I believe it was, she was like an evangelical preacher or something like that. Lawanda Page made appearances on Amen with Sherman Hemsley, also who she uh, played next to on her episode of The Love Boat. She was also on Family Matters, 227, Different Strokes, and did a whole series of Church's Chicken commercials, the Gotta Love It commercials, and those were airing right when I moved out here, so I remember those. Now what's crazy also is that when I was preparing to do this maybe like a year ago, someone sent me, a friend of mine sent me and said, did you know about this? That after or kind of during Sanford and Son, um, not only did she release a record with like a lot of her catchphrases from the show and everything, but she was selling, they had Lawanda Page handbags, like on Esther purses that you could get. <laughs> There you can see it says, women protect yourself with heavy duty on Esther purses. Watch it, sucka. They even got Fred on there. Now let's go see if we can't find a few other notable character actor graves that are here. I'm thinking of a couple in particular I'd like to see. All right, we're heading to the Acacia Slope. Look at all these little guys. Yeah, as you can see, we're pretty close to the airport. All right, we found it. Okay, so this was easier than it should have been. I just wandered through this entire section over here only to find that if you're at the El Sereno corner here and Fairhaven here, he's right here. Actually, right here. William B. Thomas, O-Tay. That was Buckwheat from the Little Rascals. Buckwheat was famous. He was 90 something episodes of the Our Gang show. His look changed over time. I'll never forget he, when he was real little, they had him in like, his hair was kind of like in braids and stuff. And then it went straight up. <laughs> and when I was growing up, I used to watch uh, all these episodes before I would go to school when I was waiting for the bus, I would wake up, get ready, and watch Our Gang and the Three Stooges and then hop on the bus. And I'll never forget my mom laughing hysterically one day because she was watching an old Saturday Night Live when Eddie Murphy was, was doing Buckwheat. And I remember her telling me that at uh, some point someone had come out falsely claiming to be Buckwheat trying to cash in, but that the real man, William B. Thomas, he was in 90-something episodes, really funny. They always went to him for the reactions. Him and Porky were always doing things together. And as you can see, when he quit acting, he went into the army and then um, worked for Technicolor as a technician and never really tried to cash in on being buckwheat. You know, some people would eventually go on to do autograph shows and all that stuff. He never really did that stuff, but they did an Our Gang reunion where he was honored with the other living members, and it was such a big deal to him that he actually broke down in tears. And then they said that within like two months of that, he ended up passing away. So, kind of a great story in a way to know that he, right at the end of his life, got that thrill of being acknowledged for something he did when he was a child actor. God, you had to love Buckwheat. They ended up inventing the Buckwheat character to kind of replace Stymie, and Buckwheat ended up lasting until 1944 when they completely ended the series. Now we're heading into the Manchester Garden Mausoleum. Oh, well, I walked into this one, and this is not who I was looking for, but here's Johnny Cochran. 
Fame lawyer for O.J. Simpson. It says warrior of justice. If it does not fit, you must acquit. That was him. And his parents, it looks like, are right next to him. So there's one in particular I'm looking for, but I just figured since this has a lot of people, a lot of famous people buried in it, I just kind of go in each little room and see if I recognized any names. There's one in particular, like I said, I'm looking for. Okay, I finally found the right chapel I'm looking for, Chapel of Freedom. So as soon as we walk in, we see that. And who we're looking for is right here, Mr. Robin Harris. Now, if you don't know who Robin Harris is, probably more my generation. He was um, Sweet Dick Willie and Do the Right Thing. He was in Mo Better Blues, and I knew him from uh, the House Party movie. He was Pop. He played um, Kid's dad, and then you know, he was a really famous comedian for his day. African-American comedian and um, always did this routine about his girlfriend Jamaica and her nightmare kids Baby's kids, so they were in the process of making or working on a screenplay to do a baby's kids movie starring Robin Harris, but uh, unfortunately he ended up untimely passing away of a heart attack at the age of 36 years old. He had just done a show in Chicago, a sold out show, and um, was found next morning in his Four Seasons hotel room by his brother. But he was such a funny guy. And what they ended up doing was, um, since he ended up passing away, they made two other house party movies. They didn't recast him, they just mentioned that he passed away, and they kind of refer to him in different parts of both sequel movies. And then they ended up doing a Baby's Kids animated show since he, well, animated movie, since he unfortunately passed away, you know, while they were working on it, they had Faison Love come in and do the voice of Robin Harris for the movie. And I love that movie too. They used to show it on HBO all the time. So when I saw that Robin Harris was buried here, I definitely wanted to stop because if you don't know him from the other stuff, Do the Right Thing was such a great movie. He's part of that great chorus. People that always go out there at the, uh, when everything goes down at the end of the movie and stuff, Robin Harris is really good in that movie. All right, I think we're gonna save the rest of the Exploring This Cemetery for another time. I mainly wanted to come out here and see Lawanda Page's grave, but then I figured, you know, we're so close, we should include Buckwheat and we should include Robin Harris too. We'll come out here again because there's quite a few vlogs that I want to do in the future. And one, I didn't realize that the person was buried here and I've wanted to vlog his story for quite a while. So I'm most definitely gonna be back out here in the future. Actually, I think before we take off, we'll go check out the Sanctuary of Radiance and see if anybody pops out at me in here before we go. Well, I'm glad I came in here. We literally just came in from this door right here. And right here I noticed, I'm like, that couldn't be the same one. Then I go, actually, it probably could be the same one. It is famed architect Paul R. Williams. Very famous Hollywood, Los Angeles architect. First um, African-American architect to really get a, uh, get a chance and get recognition. So many famous homes were Paul R. Williams homes. Many celebrity homes, in fact. Wow, good to see him here. I mean, not good to see him here, but I accidentally bumped into him. Okay, I'll stop talking now. Now, just as I was getting ready to walk out of here and give up because we hadn't found anybody else, I see this name and I go, I know him. There's only one Jester Hairston. I knew him from my youth as Raleigh Forbes from Amen. When Sherman Hemsley had a TV show, it would have been the late 80s where he was, the whole show was centered around a church. Raleigh was total comedy relief in there, but he was also an arranger, composer, all that. He came out to Hollywood actually to, uh, to do that, to be a choir director and everything. And he was actually one of the original founding fathers of uh, the Screen Actors Guild. He also went to Juilliard. And what's interesting about him is that he, um, he was responsible for doing a lot of the choral arrangements for a lot of the movies that you would see in the 
40s and 50s. Look at that, almost 100 years old. All right, my friends, I think we're gonna call it a day. Thank you, Joanna Bill Cannon and Linda Koch for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Have a great night, and goodbye.